I was a man in high school. College, and I was all Big 12, had all these accolades, these records. At that time, God was secondary in my life. I was more in the driver's seat of my life. I had the control over the wheel, and God was just in the back seat. I looked back at him when I was having problems, when I needed him, that's when I called on him. Football, at that time, was my idol, because that's what I was tied to. That's what people knew me as, Trent Shelton, the football player. When you get to the NFL, and you're expected to be drafted, you know, I was expected to go fourth and fifth round, and you're sitting there watching the TV, and your name isn't called. It takes away your confidence. And at that time, I became angry at God. When you were a free agent, you start at the bottom of the totem pole. So that was something that was totally new for me, and I really didn't know how to handle it, honestly. So I decided to turn the things that I thought would fill that void into the world, which a lot of people do. I turned to alcohol, I turned to a couple of drugs, I turned to sex, I turned to partying, I turned to clubbing. I turned to all these things that gave me temporary fulfillment, but of course it wasn't permanent. I would just feel empty again and again and again. When I got to the NFL, the first thing I did, you know, I always told myself that I'm gonna get the car with the rims. I did that, I got an avalanche truck on 26s, the worst investment of my life on those 26s. I mean, I spent $8,000 on it. I bought the jewelry. I bought all these things that I've seen people in the NFL have. And so I was trying to keep up with the Joneses, but hurting inside. So I was smiling for the camera, but behind the scenes, I was dying inside. With Indianapolis Colts, uh, I was at the bottom of the totem pole. You know, I actually, my preseason was great. I led the NFL of all receivers in preseasons. At that time, I was like, oh yeah, I'm in the door. They still put me on practice squad. Two weeks later, they cut me. So I had to drive all the way from Indy to Texas. Got back here, as soon as I got here, they called me back. And I started turning to those things again. I started to doubt God again. I started to do all these things, become angry, become sheltered. I was doing real good on the practice squad, like really good. And I still remember it was a Sunday night game playing against the San Diego Chargers. And Coach Dungey told the whole team, like, Shrimp, you gotta be ready. He told me that week, you're gonna play. And at that time, my knee couldn't have flared up the wrong time. It was real bad tendonitis. I had to pop painkillers. I had to take ibuprofen. All these things were a big knee brace. They were calling me old man. I was just 21 years old just to make it through practice. I knew that was my opportunity. And our coach Dungey talked to me on Friday night and was like, Trent, you know, I really want you to go, but you don't look like you're ready. And, you know, I felt like that was the moment where my life just really started spiraling downhill. And I got a call. They give you no explanation, they don't have to. It's just like, hey, we're going another route, we're gonna release you. Seattle Seahawks called me. Seattle was even worse, honestly, because I came in late. They had their guys up there. So when I got up there, you know, I performed well, but the same thing, they released me after preseason. They brought me back, practice squatted me. And I went there like three or four times. It was to the point where they would tell me they're bringing me back. I drove to the airport. Bags packed, called me and said, nah, we changed our mind. Started to ask me, why am I doing this anymore? Like, I don't even love it no more. Why am I doing it? And uh, Seattle was very rough, but that was the time where my son was born that September. And that really changed my life. It was, it was out of, um, you know, wedlock situation. I was thinking all the wrong things at, at that point. But then I woke up and was like, this is my son, and I'm gonna be there for my son. So he was actually born on September 25th. I was like, wow, a little me. He looked at me with his eyes and he stopped crying. And once I seen his eyes, I immediately told myself, I asked myself, I said, do I want him to follow in my footsteps? And the first thing I said was no. And as a father, as a parent, as a mentor, as a leader, whatever you are, if you have to tell yourself you don't want somebody to follow in your footsteps, that shows you that you're leading the wrong path. And I wanted to change my life immediately. It made me, live a life getting closer to Christ. Blessed enough that I got an opportunity with the Washington Redskins. Performed there, ran the fastest time of my life, a 4-3, they seen it, looked at the clock and was like, wow, they signed me. Same story, practice squad, you know, did good in the preseason, but I got cut halfway through the season. But at that point in time of my life, I knew what my purpose was. I understood that the platform with the NFL, it wasn't to be a superstar athlete, it was to give me a platform to reach others and to glorify God through it. I would probably be in the NFL if that was God's plan, but I really don't miss it too much.
Trent now is a person that, um, you know, lives for Jesus Christ. I always tell people my goal is to make the name of Jesus Christ more famous each day. I'm a person who cares, a human being who cares. Uh, I want you to understand that he's going to take you places that you might not understand just to bring you to the place where he wants you to be. And after all, you know, he's never going to leave you. Despite all the sins you commit, despite all the wrong things you do, he always has your back. So don't get discouraged where you're at because our ultimate goal is eternal life.